Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Blush Studio. We have another watercolor tutorial for you today. I am really excited about this one. It is going to be um, one of our butterflies that I did earlier this fall, and I'm really excited just to share another one with you. This one I really love, and it just hold it near and dear because it has some transparent qualities with the wings themselves. And so we'll be playing around with a quick technique, and I'll just show you kind of how to achieve this look, but also a different way that you can cheat it if it doesn't work out quite the way you want it to the first time. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, to get started, I'm just going to wet the paint in my palette. I do have a full video that is a kind of a tour, a walkthrough of my palette that shows you not only how I set it up, but exactly what paints are included in my palette. Um, so that's probably the best way to reference the colors that I'm using um, in order to kind of keep up with what's going on. Because sometimes I forget to mention kind of what colors or I can't remember offhand when I'm not at my palette or with my list. So really what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be mixing different colors, different blues and different greens together to try and find the right combination for this butterfly. It is a very unique shade of a blue green and um, I actually struggled to capture it the way I wanted to. So I messed around with a couple different combinations especially because it is so light and there is again that transparent quality that I'm going to try and capture later and so I really try to um, make sure that that is coming through and so I'm messing around on a scrap piece of paper. I don't always do this because my palette is white and Usually I can tell pretty quickly like how the color is going to turn out on the paper, but when I'm, there's this particular color that might not be in my like usual color palette that I'm going for, um, then I'll mess around just like this where I'm just taking different blues and different greens and seeing which combination gets cl the closest to what I'm looking for. So again, just playing around. Um, I don't even remember how many different options I played around with and I mix those two together to see if like those were kind of in between um, and just play around with that. And then that one was wrong so we cleaned off the palette. No big deal. So I believe that green is my hooker's green but I don't remember what that blue is. So I'll have it linked down below. I'll have all of my paints linked down below, but I'll have the video that should like us the whole walkthrough for my paints. Um, I'll have that linked down below. It's a short video, but um, I find it helpful. I have to watch it once in a while to <laughs> remember the names of the colors in my palette. All right, to get started on the painting itself, we're just gonna do a light wash of color. I really love using this brush for that. This is one of my Princeton Neptune brushes and it's a watercolor brush and it holds the color and the water so well, which is really important when you're going for something like this where it's a big, a larger block of light color. And so I don't want to have to go back and forth from my palette too much um, because then the paint will dry and it will just be uneven. I really want this to be a very even block of color. Um, and part of that is because I'm going to use this moment to kind of create that transparency and that overlap that we were talking about earlier. Now I have allowed that first section to dry, which is really important if you're going for a very light overlap. Um, so I'm just gonna do the same thing with the bottom half but I'm gonna make sure that I overlap the sections where I want to have that semi-transparent quality. So I want you to be able to see the wing that's underneath through the wing that is on top of it, um, but I still want it to be very delicate. It's kind of like two glasses, two pieces of colored glass overlapping. You can still see both of them, um, but it's actually the overlap is almost prettier because of that. Um, so the trick that I've found that works pretty well is just allowing the first half to dry and then going back and doing the exact same thing with the second half. Now it, this doesn't end up getting quite as dark, um, the overlap section doesn't get quite as dark as I want it to be. So I'll show you kind of a way to cheat this if um, it doesn't work for you or if it's not quite as dark as you want it to be or um, you just struggle to capture this. Now 
Now I'm taking a, it's not a watercolor brush, it's kind of an all-purpose brush. It's a little bit stiffer. I'm just dampening that and kind of drying it off and then using it as an eraser when where some of the paint kind of bled out where I didn't want it to. Using that same brush, it's a little bit stiffer and just I'm laying down thicker amounts of pigment rather than before when I had the watercolor brush, I really want it to be soft and even. Now this is, I'm going for a texture, so I'm using kind of my all-purpose brush, which can be used for like acrylic. Um, I don't rec really recommend it for oils, but um, can be used for multiple different media. And I'm just, with my darker color that I mixed, I think my Monarch Butterfly, it's just a warm black, and I'm just adding some textured feathers to the body of the butterfly. And I'm allowing the paint to kind of run out as I go towards the tail um, because I do want that smooth gradient to be in there as well as the texture itself. And that's one of the reasons I started with the light blue to um, for the body as a whole and then added the black so that the areas that I'm leaving blank aren't just white and I don't have to like go in and fill those in later. It already has kind of that mid-tone that I wanted. All right, so here I'm adding just a little bit of the same blue that we were using before, just kind of another layer. The paint has dried, and I'm just doing that because on the left side it was captured pretty dark, and so I want it to be obviously symmetrical. I want them to match, and so I just darkened up the right-hand side a little bit more so that they do match. Um, but you can see that using those two layers created some transparency that was really fun, and. Um, really was what I was trying to capture with this piece overall. Now it's time to start on the details of the wings themselves. Obviously this is one of the more fun elements to tackle with these butterflies. Um, I am starting off with just, I always like to start off with something that is simple and kind of exterior so that it's not as tricky um, of a shape to capture and then I use that as a reference point as I continue to work on the butterfly. Um, this is for a couple of reasons. Um, for me, it's just kind of nice to have a solid base to again reference from and to build off of, but it's also just nice to, it's almost like a warm up on the painting itself. So I'm going to create a reference point that all of the other shapes will build off of, but I'm also gaining confidence and I'm just more ready to paint than I was when I first picked up that brush. Um, so I'm working on details now and before it was just large shapes. Now one thing I did before off camera is I laid down some masking fluid and just some of the dots, some of the details uh, and different elements that I don't want to have to fuss about. Um, I've done this in my other butterfly tutorials and if you're not sure how to use masking fluid I also have a tutorial for that so I'll have those linked down below but um, just a way that I could kind of move a little bit quicker through this because I didn't have to dodge some of those more random circles and different elements that were on the edge of the wings right here and so I could just kind of focus on mapping out the big dark shapes that I wanted to capture. So each of these shapes, I'm working off of a photo of an actual butterfly, and so I'm just drawing the shapes that I actually see. So if it goes out at an angle, I'm drawing it at that angle. If it has kind of a bump or a point, then I'm trying to capture that the best I can. Um, the great thing about butterflies or any other organic creature that you're working with um, or element is that it doesn't have to be perfect to still look authentic. Um, but I do try and kind of mimic the actual butterfly that I'm working off of or inspired by. Now one thing I do quite frequently is if I get kind of tired or just need a mental break from staring at the shapes or I feel like I'm getting distracted or having trouble capturing it is I'll just do something that's a little bit more mindless. 
like darkening the body of the butterfly and just kind of adding different texture to that. So you'll see that I do that off and on or I'll go over and deepen the color of something and that usually means that I just kind of need a mental break and um, that I'll just come back to in a minute. Now I'm doing what I've done with all of my butterflies um, and I am softening the edges because um, a real butterfly, uh, the wings are really lots of feathers and so there's just the softness and quality to um, each of the designs on their wings and that's the part that I find is the trickiest to capture and so what I do is I take a brush that is a little stiffer so this isn't a watercolor brush this is again kind of my all-purpose brush it's a little stiffer doesn't hold as much water and I add a little bit of pigment and a little bit of water so it's almost dry and I just kind of dance this along the edge and that's just to kind of soften it so that I'm not laying down a lot of pigment but I'm kind of allowing that gradient to kind of grow out and I'll do this to kind of continue to build the shapes and patterns um, and again I really want this to be delicate so you'll see me going back getting more water or getting a touch more pigment but my goal is really to keep this just a little bit softer and um, not quite so harsh so I'll just be connecting different things doing that same technique a little bit of pigment a little bit of water if I ever feel like it's too dark I'll go back dab off my brush and get a little bit more water um, or if it's just not showing up get a touch of pigment. Now the trick when working with something that's a little bit more organic like this, um, like just some of the lines and the patterns on these wings, is to look for recognizable shapes. So right here I kind of found a little rectangle that bumps into the darker section that I already pulled out. And a lot of these are rectangles and even though they're a little bit messier, they come to points and those points are usually pretty well defined and so I can add a little bit more pigment there and it looks really intentional. Um, so I'm looking for things like, okay, this one section is skinnier on the left side than it is on the right side, but it moves into that kind of semicircle shape, that arch at the top. And so that's kind of what I'm looking for when I'm breaking down these different elements of the pet, of the, almost said the petal, of the wings themselves. And so I'm just kind of working one piece at a time. One thing that I find a lot of my students will do or different artists will do is that if it's something that they've never done before, they just look at the hole and they freak out. And it's, you know, like looking at the forest and being like, how am I supposed to paint this whole thing? It's just a bunch of trees. Let's start with tree number one kind of thing. And this is really just a lot of rectangles that are kind of squishy. And um, they're different sizes, but they connect at different points. And all you need to do is to kind of break it down and do one thing at a time. All right, time to go back in and add some more of these darker elements. Um, the reason I'm adding these after adding all of the other dark elements and after adding my lines in is because I really wanted these lines to look elegant and purposeful. Um, I didn't want them to look jagged or kind of misplaced or forced because I placed these dots, which really could kind of float anywhere. I mean, um, this butterfly, at least to me, is not recognizable enough that I would be like, hey, that dot is supposed to line up this way. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that the lines look purposeful, and then I could add the dots, which there are less of, 
afterwards in order to keep everything looking really purposeful and clean and just elegant. And now for some fun, I'm going through and adding just a light wash of a pale yellow. Um, I believe I'm using the same yellow I used for my um, African swallowtail that I did in an earlier video. And just kind of to add a little bit of depth and dimension and some visual interest. There wasn't really any yellow in my actual butterfly that I was working off of, but I really felt like this highlighted everything and captured it really well, bringing out a little bit more of that green side of the minty blue. Now following the same pattern as before, um, on the lower half of this wing, I am just going along the outside, going along the perimeter of the wing itself, um, not only to kind of gain confidence and get ready to work on this particular wing, but also so that I can use it as a guide for when I'm creating the more delicate lines later. And this will just kind of be my home base for the outside of the wing, and then everything else will transition towards the inside. And now I'm going to clean up all of these shapes, just going through with, again, a mostly wet brush with a little bit of pigment on it, but this is almost, really an almost dry brush, so if you're going in with a really wet brush, it's going to make a mess. Um, and I'm just softening all of the edges so that they don't look quite so geometric and they look really purposeful and organic and natural, like a natural part of the butterfly. Um, on a couple of them I got kind of carried away, so I'll clean off my brush and I'll just go through and pick up some of that extra pigment. Um, and again, I'm just, I'm really just adding water, drying it off on my paper towel or my um, spare towel and just going back in and massaging it and if I need to, cleaning off more of the pigment and going back. Now here you can see that I'm going back in with our same pale blue that I mixed earlier and I'm just adding some of those little veins that are within the wings themselves and just slowly building up that intensity. If I feel like the color is coming off too bright, um, just the blue layered on the blue, then I'll add a little bit of the black just to kind of desaturate it a little bit and to keep everything cohesive. Um, normally if I'm working on desaturating a color I'll use the complement, um, but just because I want to keep this piece really unified I'll just end up using the same black tone that I used for the other details. Um, 
you can use a complementary color to kind of desaturate something. In fact, that's probably something that a lot of art teachers would recommend that you do. But for me, I just like keeping everything simple and um, keeping my palette simple, basically. <laughs> and so that's probably what I would do if I was going to go back in and I'll eventually be like deepening some of the, especially like the angles to really help them pop a little bit, just like we did with the top. And I'll just go in with a tiny bit of that black pigment added to the blue just to kind of add that definition without and the value to deepen the value but to prevent it from um, brightening the color or the saturation of the piece overall. So you can see me adding a little bit of black here on the edge and I'll just kind of pull that down. Now I'm a little bit heavy, I really wanted to kind of desaturate and to make this angle pop, but I didn't want it to look too sharp. So that's why I went over it a couple of times and I'm just kind of softening that line um, because the pigment I put it down a little too thick to start with. And really what I'm doing now is as I st I'll step back from the painting and I'll look at it and I'll say like, okay, what disappears as I step back and that's why I'm kind of adding this definition along the side because it just kind of faded into the paper too much. Once that's done I'm going to start taking off the masking fluid so I find that the easiest way to do this is just with an eraser and I just kind of massage the area where the masking fluid is and it comes off nicely and reveals the paint that is paint or paper depending on what you did that is underneath and um, it worked great this time. I love using masking fluid especially for projects like this with some more details. And just like everything else, I'm just softening the edge. Um, it was They come off a little bit crispy, <laughs> um, really is the best way to describe it. There's a lot of sharp angles, and I really want this piece to be soft, and so I'm just kind of softening the edges while still keeping that space negative. adding the final texture and details to the body just to kind of create that definition before I started on the left side of the butterfly itself. Um, so I'm just kind of adding, I'm bringing in that darker element on the sides just to help add some modeling and help it to look a little bit more three-dimensional as well as again defining that space because when I'm stepping back from it the body fades and I don't want it to fade into the paper. After this is done, I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the left side. So if you feel like you need kind of to have that tutorial while you're painting, go ahead and replay this video again. Um, to save, to respect your time, I'm not going to do that. But this is the final result. I love how it turned out. I love that um, the antennae are a little bit different and just helps to add 
more life to the piece overall. I love that transparency and just that this piece is really light and delicate. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If there's a different butterfly you'd like to see or something specific you'd like to see me paint and just kind of talk through, um, go ahead and leave that in the comment section down below. And until next time, happy painting!